Welcome to December 15th, 2022's meeting of the Hingham Historic Districts Committee. This meeting is called to order as of 6.32 p.m. <clears throat> this meeting is being held remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to an order issued by the governor of Massachusetts dated March 12th, 2020, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting are being recorded by the town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. <clears throat> As I mentioned a minute ago, um, Carol and Catherine are out sick and um, <clears throat> uh, Josh is dealing with some sick kids. So um, there's only four items on the agenda tonight. Um, the first one, 66 Lincoln Street and the um, 120 South Street is no longer on the agenda. But for 66 Lincoln Street and 219 Main Street, <clears throat> I want to keep um, the voting members, just uh, Justin, Dan, and myself. Um, for 174 North Street, because it's new, and 273, 270 North Street, because it's new, um, I'll have Mary Ann and Eric, <clears throat> if you're able to um, participate and, and be voting members on those two, that'd be great. Is that okay with everybody, or does anyone need to be rec recuse themselves? Um, Roger, since the seven o'clock is, um, has withdrawn their application, we're probably going to start your project right at 720. You're welcome to hang out if you want, or, um, just come back at 715 or so and we'll get to you. All right. <clears throat> um, so with that said, um, let's start with uh, 66 Lincoln Street. We had a site visit two weeks ago. We got an updated application hand delivered two days ago or so. <clears throat> see Meredith here. Yes, I got there at 4.03. Just missed. <laughs> Just missed that cutoff. Um, Sorry, you can't, uh, you know, the, the uh, post the office. Postman, yeah, the postman does his thing and he picks up at a certain time. So, sorry. No, no, no worries at all. I hope I left it in an okay spot for everybody. Um, I was trying to follow Andrea's guidelines as best I could, and you all have beautiful homes. So <laughs> it was nice to see them all. It was like a nice little sightseeing. Good. Yeah. Thank you, Meredith. Of course. Well, um, if we, we'll jump right into it. So just yeah. um, thank you to the committee again for the, the meeting of a couple Saturdays ago. Um, very helpful and we took all those comments and we've uh, made some updates and additions or I shouldn't say additions but just updates to the previous package that uh, we'd love to just walk you through it should I share my screen this time we're actually please. like at home and not in a chaotic yes, yes so please <laughs> it says host disabled participant screen. yeah wait a minute I'll get it okay <laughs> Um, how's that? Nope. Nope, not yet. Not yet. Screen share, yeah, it keeps popping up. Okay, hold on. Sorry. I'm sorry. I am not uh This is not, hold on just a minute.
Just let me know when I should try again. I keep sporadically trying. So we are familiar with the project. Is um yeah. We do have the packets. Okay. So, so uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh so as you can see, we crossed off a few things. Um, if you go to page three. So we'll just go down the list. Uh yep. So 1737 original house. Uh we're still hoping to put wooden shutters um on the front facade and then um paint the existing siding um and then uh re instead of replace the windows um re replace only the windows on the 1960s edition um instead restore everything else um but we do want to replace the storm windows um so yeah. just to be clear all the windows on, on the 1737 and all the windows on the 1927, you would restore and install new storm. Correct. And then the 1960s, which that's the, is that the back or is that the garage? It's that's the, the garage, garage side. It's the part to the right. Yep. So the garage side you're replacing with the one that's in your packet here. Yeah, the Marvin. The Marvin custom match. Okay. So they, they would, they would, we would want them to look like the 1737 house. Okay. Like the, as many divided lights as that and all of that. Which would add, in our opinion, continuity to the, you know, to the overall. Yep. Are you adding storms to those or no? Uh, they would not be necessary at okay. that point. Okay. On the front we're going to do interior storms like the very front and then on the sides everywhere else exterior storms that way the front is true to the original nature of the house um so then moving on down um add we still add two doors to the right elevation but not french doors just because of the sizing of it um and then the 1960s edition we'd still like to add overhang over the double garage door and um uh the new brackets new, yeah. yeah the brackets and all of that are detailed out in there and then uh um sorry the window box or the flower boxes as well um and then for the barn um paint it white um and then well not white off white um, and then add just one existing barn light, which I updated that. And then the hardscape um, driveway to the house, um, same as before. And uh, I, by the way, I verified that with the exist the previous owner, that driveway did go right up to the barn before. It's just that they moved the barn off the driveway. So this would basically just be bringing it back to its original state. And then, um, extending the blue stone patio and field stone wall um some more of my fun photoshop work in there uh and then add the wooden fence to the right side of the property and then business signs are just not yeah they're wall. temporary so okay. so, so they, yeah. that's an overall recap of everything uh, I'm happy to kind of go through each item one by one, just whatever um, suits you guys. Okay. Um, is there more information on the flower boxes? I realized as soon as we got on here that I never pulled that out. So um, we can, I, we can follow up with that. So these are on the side elevation those two windows above the garage doors. Yep. You want to add flower boxes under those. Okay. Yes. We just need a- like Although a, I a think, yeah. Um, so in terms of the shutters, I, so I'm just scrolling through. I still can't share my screen for some reason. 
Um, but scrolling through, I updated the driveway plan because I know when you guys were there, there was misunderstanding that it would go and connect to that other driveway. It won't, it will just have a turnaround spot in front. Um, and then, uh, let's see, we updated the windows um, or showed the, the new storm windows that we would be doing. Um, and then the shutters, I was looking for a pair that matched what I think Gary was explaining to me and I'm not sure that I got it right so if it's not right we're open to change we just um well Gar Gary's comment was more period appropriate was eliminating the mid rail and then narrower uh louvers which this seems to seems to do right um and we can these these are this is a custom sh wood shutter baker so we can adjust that however need be so we can like put less space between the louvers if needed um so yeah uh do you want me to keep going or did you guys want to jump in on any of this oh, dan do you have any questions or clarifying do you have anything on the windows um i'm just going to try to go through uh in order then so um and apologies i couldn't make it to the site visit um, sorry, I just need to let my dog in. No worries. Um, so, I guess uh, for things that jump out at me, just trying to figure out what we can and can't tackle tonight, um, is this, sorry, I could pack it apart. Is this drawing here? I can't really see. It shows the driveway. I can kind of read, I can read that and see that. But then there was some stuff on the back. I think it was saying existing bluestone patio. Does that, I can't really make this out, but is this drawing intended to show us where the bluestone patio is going to extend to? The existing bluestone patio is that one box. And then yep. up to the left of that is the patio, like the extension of it. Extension, okay. Um, yeah, I wish you could share you. Yeah, yeah. I wish you could just because yeah. it's really hard for me to like. I tried to tried to understand where that is because that was one of the things that jumped out at me is um, I couldn't really understand from the Photoshop of where the bluestone patio was going to go, and you know, really we need something dimension to tell us uh, where it's going so we can understand that. Um, so there is a dimension in there. Sorry, yeah. it might just be like could, bad could we email quality. folks. Would that help? uh sure so also my program is um adobe acrobat and it has like pixelated things a little more than it should have so yeah. um but it's 46 uh feet long by 25 feet deep and that's okay noted. and that's noted on there say sorry say that dimension again 46 feet long by 25 feet deep Okay. And so I guess looking at this picture, and I can't share my screen either. Um, I'm going to draw that big black box that I just drew. That's your existing bluestone patio? Yep. That's and then which way is it going? Is it coming out this way? Is it going that way? I can't quite tell. It's going, it's hard to point yeah. in my way. It's going this, it's going towards the existing driveway. No, that's going, the new driveway. Oh, uh, so it's going. Oops. It's the full length so, of, yeah, that, so it's that following the that, house. Yeah, so it's following that arrow going that direction, and it's the full length of the house. That back okay. it's part of the house. Yeah, towards the existing driveway and then up towards the back of the house. Are you able to share screen now? No, I keep trying. Nope. So is it that whole red area? No, it's half of that gotcha. width wise. Width wise, but lengthwise, that's right. Lengthwise, that's correct, yes. It does okay. go back to the exit. All right, the so it's coming, out, it's coming out half the width of that back addition, the full yep. length of the house. Yep. Okay. 
those two doors that, on that 1960s edition dam they come out onto that patio okay and apologies you guys probably went over this in the site meeting i just couldn't wrap my head around that so i see it's gonna i see it's in this photo here and then the towards back. the end of the packet yeah i did a yeah. nope sorry that's the other side of the house um i show what it is existing right now it's towards the end of the packet um let me get the exact page number for you in just a second it is oh that's the window survey and that was one of the last um that shows you what it would see from the what you'd see from the public way um and it's really just an extension of what's there Sorry, my computer is thinking. Page 41 on 44. Page 41. Um, here we go. So. So it's basically going to fill in that red line there. Right. Yeah, it's about okay. to the, um, yep, it's about to the, uh, okay. there's like a gutter there. Yep. Um, but if you, if you look at the, Photoshop I did it's it's really just ex, you can see like just extending exactly what wall is there just a little bit more across the yeah. house. yeah I I'll be honest I looked at those pictures for a long time and couldn't tell where it was going and the difference so I do yeah. I, I do I do understand that it's it's a minimal impact I understand it better now yeah um, so that's going to be a raised wall right yeah. it's going to be do we know how tall that's going to be yeah, so I um eyeballed it. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the exact because I had to be back far enough to be able to determine on the slope. Um, but I believe it's going to be fifty-eight inches tall. Okay. So um, I want I want to keep it in line with what is there and the the ground slopes. So yep. the wall will get slightly taller it's just without specific masonry measuring tools it's hard to determine exactly what that height is but i'm pretty sure around 58 inches okay i understand that one better um i think that um i can wrap my head around a little bit but i don't know if we necessarily have all the you know we don't have, we have a general idea i think we just you know, as a committee, we need to be specific in terms of what we're approving, dimensions, heights, and uh, materials, and things like that. So I think we generally have an idea. We just kind of maybe need that on paper a little bit more. Um, all right, so then just going through the rest of the list, um, the existing siding, curious, why did you switch to a uh, Benjamin Moore white dove? I'm not familiar uh, with that being up. So I was told um, that as long as it's not white white uh white dove is a like off white look but it doesn't necessarily just have to be um jewet white that's what i was gotcha. told by a member of the committee so actually yeah i i did talk to um meredith and we talked about the colors and i explained that um in general the colors for this period are very dark um, and we talked about um, the colors in the houses in Deerfield which are a fine example of of what we'd like to see here what is appropriate let's put it that way and mm -hmm. so I said we never approve of bright white um, and Jewett white is is fine but it is also it works with some colors and not with others. So uh, we have also accepted a um, a creamy white as a um, as a trim color. Um, although, again, we need to go back to the period, and there were no whites really. So. Okay, that's it. Uh, okay, so yeah, that was yeah. my hesitation. I'm familiar with the um, the room behind me is White Dove, so I'm very familiar with it. Um, and so 
I actually went, you stopped by my house, you saw that I have an off-white house. And that was one of the colors that we mocked up when we looked at it early on. And um, it's pretty, pretty bright and pretty white uh, in the sunlight. Uh, so I, I kind of have hesitation. Um, you know, I thought about that mm -hmm. color myself and um, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable for it. And, you know, especially for a 1700s house. So I would, yeah, I think I, we I can do with colors. We, I, I think we can deal with colors. Later. Yeah. Okay. Andrew. Um, okay. The windows, um, the Marvin windows, uh, I was just curious because you guys were trying to match what's there. Um, the windows were a composite exterior and I think they're black. Is that right? Yes, to match the glazing. Gotcha. So they'll be inset wonder... and just over the part that's already black on the window. So the idea is that they just disappear. So you can actually see the nice windows, the original windows. Uh, no, no, I was saying for your replacement windows. Um, was that intended to be that's a it's an exterior black color um, for you know the main the main sash of the window is black. Um, I was just curious how that was going to look when none of the other windows look that way on on the building. Uh, no, they, they are black. They're black. I mean, they I'm okay. black. It might be like a charcoal black, a midnight black, a a shadow black. It's they're black, but the storm windows are white around them right now. So they don't look black, but the, the original windows are black. Okay. Yeah, so, it's hard to, it's hard to um, see that they look very white. So, okay. Um, did you say that it's a composite exterior? It is a composite exterior is the only other question I had was, um, would you consider an all wood and painting it black as opposed to a composite? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, we, the intent is to replace the windows with a mat, you know, with a, a replica of the, okay. the 1737 house. Okay. Um, Very hard to then, see, but there's the, there's one of the yep, storms. Yeah. All black. Okay. Um, those are, and then the barn and stuff like that. So, um, I might have a couple other comments. I just got to kind of go through the list. I don't know if um, any other committee members that were at the site visit want to go, Tracy. Sure. Um, Eric, do you have any comments or questions? Um, I think only to maybe help Dan a bit on the, the back patio. You can see it from the street, but very minimal. Like if you drive, I don't, you probably have driven by, but you, you can see it, but it's definitely subdued in the back. Um, and being on site, you you get that more. Um, I had one clarification. I, at the last meeting, I, I thought we came to the conclusion, or at least there's a suggestion that this period home wouldn't have shutters at all on the front elevation. Um, it seems like that's sort of shifted. So just understanding clarification on that. Um, that was so, a really good uh, yeah, so Gary came out um, and mentioned that some period homes would and some period homes wouldn't. So we want to be one. We that want would. we want to be one that would. So fair enough. Okay, yeah. thank you. That's all I've got, Tracy. Very end. Uh, my big concern about this is the lack of precision for the drawings, for the plans, for the pictures. I mean, I don't feel that we're seeing what you might install or we're not seeing what we'll get. Um, and my question is, how could we approve something that's a little nebulous or imprecise um, because there are no um, measurements on all of the drawings um, and there's no definitive, I don't think, at least to my eyesight, um, where everything is going to be. Um, that's one concern I have is the imprecision of the drawings. The other is the fence. 
that's going to be built on one of the borders. Is that not going? And I think the sample is given on the last page of the plans. That sample doesn't mimic the fence in the front of the house. Is the fence all around the house going to be the same or are you going to have different fences on different boundaries? Um, that wouldn't make sense to me, but um, that was another question I had. Um, also, um, the great room in the back, I thought was gonna have a gas fireplace and I thought it was, thought I had seen it on some plan how is I, but I don't seem to see it on these plans that were given out. So I'm wondering if that's still part of the um, what you want to put in and install, and that would affect from a public view. Um, it, it would, I think you would see from a public view that room would have two fireplaces the original one of the 1700s house, and then um, the gas one of the 2022 house. Um, so we just we decided to take out the gas fireplace. Okay. Um, I'm not sure where you saw that, but there was going to be no exterior change in regard okay. to that anyway. Okay. Um, but we decided to take it out anyway um, and just do a bookshelf there. Uh, and then in terms of the dimensions, I feel like the printed version for some reason is distorting them, but there are dimensions on, um, on these drawings. Um, short of having an architect for the one piece, which is probably the garage overhang. The shutters are um, dimensionally correct on the pro existing versus proposed. Um, and then the brackets, I show exactly what bracket we'd be using and exactly what kind of overhang would look like um, and exactly the dimensions on that. So um, yeah, short of having an actual architect draw just that one piece. Um, well, well, I think we certainly get the information on the drawing. It, you know, I think it, you know if the if the concept's approved and it just needs a little little bit clarification on the measurements, then we can certainly certainly do that. But there's no plan to have an architect do drawings. For the whole project for the whole outside project for you well i think it, i think if we can go you know look at line item by line item and uh, you know if an architectural plan would help us then um certainly you know we can we can do that uh, and we have had some architectural drawings done i think it's just some of the, some of the dimensions need to get i guess uh made a little clearer but i mean that, that's why i say as a, as a group as a committee here working with you guys you know what what are the which of the bullet points could we help add a little more dimension to sure i'll go yeah. through that shortly um justin do you, have any, do you have any comments or questions justin uh the only comment is is uh, i think we can put colors to later uh by uh i think it would be appropriate for shutters to be included uh, particularly if the, the shutters are uh, uh, faithful to the era uh, in form and so there is a cut sheet on the shutters yeah and but there was it was unclear to me whether uh, there was some change uh, in what that cut sheet depicts when I uh, no, I think what they yeah. showed before had a, a rail through the center of it, and they've gotten right. rid of it now. Ah, okay. So that was eliminated, and yeah. now I understand. And I'm grateful uh, to the applicants for the window schedule and uh, for the uh, uh, refurbishment of the older the older and, window. And let me say this: uh, you know, I haven't done the exercise of checking each window in the building. Uh, the 1960s windows were were in the worst condition of them all. I can say that, and that's a fact. The uh, the windows on the front of the house in that 1737 building were were in the best shape. Hands down. It's easy to believe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I I I think largely uh, I don't see any very significant 
uh, elements that would be inappropriate. But I do agree with Marianne and uh, Dan that the the paper copy we have at hand is a little hard to read, but it, but it, but I, it's easy to believe that that can be annotated or made more clear as we go forward. Okay, so just going down the list, um, I I do think we need a site plan that shows you know you've shown the driveway here. It's it's clear. Um, I think we need that same detail for where the wall is, how tall the wall is. We need some additional information on the wall that I think I discussed with you when we were on the site. Um, where the patio is <clears throat> and dimensions, um, you know. So I think the site plan does need to have that information added. Um, it might be helpful to have the size of the gates on the driveway. Is that going to be a manual gate? It's not an electric gate, correct? Um, it's going to have a mechanism that will open it, but it's a it's a manual gate. Uh, like you Get wouldn't see the, the mechanism. OK. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Visually, you wouldn't see it. Right. Um, you know, Marianne brought up a good point. I realize that the the fence in front of the house is only three feet tall or so, and you're looking to do, I think you said a six foot fence for the driveway. Yes, we're looking to add some privacy for the backyard. You know, but does that uh, scale down as you get closer to the garage because the, you have that, you're setting it on top of that wall or is it gonna be six foot the whole way? So it's gonna be either sloped or stepping as it goes down. Yep. Six feet tall on a slope, right? Mm -hmm. Six feet tall on a slope. Um, the Jason, okay, so can you clarify, or um, Meredith, you mind clarifying just if the existing fence is being removed and being replaced with six feet, or the six foot is just back by the garage? The six foot is back by the garage, and the existing fence we're just planning on upkeep, just um, painting it the same color as the house uh, trim, and then. Um, I think there are some posts missing. And then of course, removing the section for the driveway. And, and I, may I might recommend on the site plan to show the existing and the new, so you can see that they're not on the same plane that I feel like will help. Yeah. Okay. Like the existing's out by the road and the new one's kind of set back by the garage. I think that might yep. help clarify. Um, on the shutters, if you, are you putting any hardware on that? Whether it be brackets or handles or anything else, or or are these just wood shutters, as we see on that spec cut sheet? Oh. So yes, we definitely have hard, um, hardware on it. The problem was I couldn't find exactly what Gary mentioned, but if you've been to the historic society, um, they have like those undermount ones. I just have to search more for them. I just can't seem to find uh, which ones those are, but it's um underneath it looks like gary's raising his hand right now too oh, i didn't see him on here um i'll get to you in a few minutes gary hold on that's fine um but we'd want to see a cut sheet on the hardware um you crossed off two number three paint uh we can deal with um you can deal directly with andrea on that um the windows we'd be looking We'd prefer a an all wood window. It seemed like you were open to that rather than the um, uh, clad. Um, the two doors. This is for the this is for the actual windows for the nineteen sixties part. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Not the not the storms. The storms. I don't know. I don't think I fully understand an interior storm, um, but I saw a cut sheet for the exterior storm. Yeah. So the interior storm you wouldn't see. That was a suggestion by Gary. So thank you for that, Gary. Um, and then the exterior storms would be less visible because they're inset. Uh, we also used Gary's recommendation for who to call for that. So yeah, that was my question. Who's going to be doing the? Um, do you know who's going to do the restoration on the windows? 
Um, we Would talked you? to somebody today, but we've been talking to a couple people just to get it right. But um, Peter Bickford was one of them. Yeah, she got some names from Andrea. Yeah. Um, from past work uh, history. Blackburn Conservation. Okay. Who came through today? So we're just waiting for a quote from them. Um, B the two doors. <clears throat> I don't see a cut sheet or anything on the doors. <clears throat> So we would want to see that as well as um, hardware. And if you're putting uh, lights on those doors, which I think you might need to by code, we'd want to, I, you know, I don't know if it's the same light as you're proposing for the barn or not. Okay. Um, 1960s edition. I think part of the problem with the drawing is you're trying to get four drawings on one sheet and then it's, you know, printing the narrow way on an eight and a half by 11. So this drawing is pretty much illegible for us, unfortunately. Okay. But I think um, getting the window boxes on the drawing with dimensions, getting this awning over the garage with dimensions, I see the detail for the um, bracket, it's very simple. Um, I don't think I saw dimensions on that or not. Um, I could have sworn I wrote them down. I know I wrote them, I might not. Yeah. But, you know, it could be that, you know, there's a little blow up of that area rather than trying to show the whole elevation, maybe show the whole elevation, but then there's a blow up to get into some of that detail so we can understand the window box. Um, we can get a little bit more understanding of how far this projection hangs over the garage. Okay. Uh, and then... Two and three on the 60s edition is paint. Four, we've talked about that window already. The barn, you're down to just adding the one light. So you're going to, are you leaving the windows as is or are you going to repair those windows? Repair those as well. So those are getting restored. So that should be listed here to restore those existing windows um, rather than just cross out. It's great you're restoring rather than replacing. Um, and then we have the information on the barn light. You're down to one light. Um, the driveway, I think we have the information on. And then I've already commented on the stone wall and the blue stone patio and the fence. So I think that addresses everything. Do you have any questions on what information we'd be looking for? Are you, are you yeah, no, I, um, I had talked to Andrea about questioning if there was a way to maybe have parts of the application approved or voted on now if any if you deem that any part of it is <coughs> enough like specifically um the driveway is pretty big um just because we need to move forward on that well just in terms of constructability too and just traffic uh it just would help things immensely yeah um and, and, then, and the time of year too if we could try to get in and in terms of the paint colors, um, I, I was, uh, Andrew gave me a list um, and I, I feel like I'm stabbing in the dark mm -hmm. and I'd like to just like, if, if you just want to tell me what ones are going to be okay, I, like I, I can pick a different color. I just, we're trying to steer, I know I, like. Oh, the, paint color, the paint colors can be a conversation with Andrea that she okay. needs to approve at that okay. level. Okay. Right? That Perfect doesn't seven. have to come to the committee. Okay. All right. right. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I think that we could maybe vote on tonight would be the driveway. I'm not sure anything else is really ready. Um, okay. And I don't know what others would think, but um, we could, you know, if um, Dan or <clears throat> Justin are okay with that, we can maybe release the driveway. That feels like an, uh, an accurate statement. Um, okay. And I, but I would also say that I uh, don't see anything that is plainly inappropriate. Um, you know, yeah, we're just looking for additional info. Right. Sure. Yeah. Um, so before we would get to potentially having that motion on the driveway, Gary, you have anything to say, sir? Yes, sir. Um, I just I just wanted to offer uh, some couple of suggestions um, relative to the windows. I'm glad to see that you're restoring the uh, 
original sash because that's uh, made of eastern pine, which is an excellent windows. Um, I was going to suggest that on the Lincoln Street facing windows in the 1960s edition. I don't know if those would be treated the same way as the Lincoln Street windows on the 1730s house. Um, the other thought would be is that if you are going to look at a Marvin window, I would go with that signature Ultima because on that window, you can do a drop sill, a thicker sill, um, and you can also the lower rail on the uh, bottom sash can be increased to three and a half inches, which would make it look uh, similar to the colonial uh, early, you know, 18th century proportions of the existing windows. And the only window Marvin makes that does that, which is a good window, uh, is that particular series. Um, the, other quite, the other thing in terms of the shutters, um, you know, in the early 1700s, you didn't see that much. In the late 1700s, you did. Um, the, if you were to do a shutter on this house, you would want to do eye and pencil hardware. You'd want to do the vertical, simple shutter dogs at the bottom. Um, and also the blades or the, or the, uh, the uh, blind slats are, they actually project outboard of the face of the rail and style, the rail being the horizontal part of the frame and the style being the vertical part. And there's a little bit of a bead molding that's applied because they project out about three eighths of an inch. They're heavier blades because the proportions on the 18th century houses are heavier. Um, so I would say there's a company in Ossipee, New Hampshire, Beach River Mill, who I've used, and they make wonderful shutters and they can make anything and, and get you the hardware to make it period appropriate. And they're not too far away. Okay, perfect. Um, there's another company in Missouri, but they're probably too far away, although their prices are probably good. It's Western Millwork in Missouri, but it's probably too far away. Um, I would suggest that. The other thing I would suggest is I'm glad that you're keeping the um, portico uh, flush with the front of the fa facade. I think that's very important for this house. I might suggest that you take a trip out to Deerfield and take a walk and see the houses in Deerfield because they will give you a lot of ideas and clues as to what this house, um, you know, what it, what it, it's, it's foreign language. It's the vocabulary of the design in the earlier 18th century uh, components. And a picture's worth a thousand words. I think it'd be very helpful to see that because um, this house was built at that same period. Um, and then let's see, um, on the, uh, to look at a shutter that would, probably fit this house in terms of scale. If you were to look at there's a Georgian Federal across from the New North Church um, and um, brick ended, it has Georgian type shutters on it with, of similar blade um, profiles is what I'm talking about and no center rail. Um, and that house is early as a, it's you know more of a Georgian than a Federal, but it has a hip board, but that's the kind of scale of shutter. Um, and painted black, they look pretty nice. Um, the other thing I was gonna, let's see, where else was I? Um, one of the things to consider is that if you're, um, if you, if the site disturbance is more than, um, uh, if you're, the slope area where the site disturbance is, is greater than 10%, if you disturb more than 2,500 square feet, you have to get a, you have to go in front of a planning board, the site plan review. So it's just something to consider on the patio and the terrace out back. Um, but we had a good walk through. It was nice to see the house. It's good to see that you're, you know, looking at a lot of these, these. I like the idea of exposing the sash, the black sash on the front, you know, those uh, parting beads and those, those ratchet, um, that ratchet hardware and that per period when sash can all be repaired. Um, and uh, so it, it would, look quite nice uh, if the sash was exposed on Lincoln Street. That's all I have for now. Anything else I could add or later, just give me, let me know. Thank, thank you, thank Gary. Thank you for all your help, Gary. Very helpful. Quite welcome. Thank you. Um, anything else from the commission? Uh, just to, Gary made a good comment about Deerfield. There's a particular house that's very similar to yours that's probably the style you're going for. It's called the Wells Thorn House. Um, Wild Storm House. Thorn, T H O R N. Okay. It's probably the color. It's probably closer to the color palette that you're looking for. If you want to look at that as a reference. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, the only other thing, um, I don't know if we wanted to, we could approve uh, the barn light. I mean, it's pretty minimal, but we could, ex uh, you're asking Tracy if there's other things that we could consider. Yeah, the, uh, the, going the, barn. the barn light, um, and then they can work with Andrea on the color and then the driveway um, I'm comfortable with. Okay. Do you or Justin want to make a motion? Uh, yeah, as long as everybody's good with that. Yep, I'm good. Yeah. Um, I'll make a motion to issue a certificate of appropriateness for 66 Lincoln Street, uh, located in the Lincoln Historic District 2, um, per the plans dated November, oh no, December, hold on. I don't know if there's really a date. Uh, so I'm going to say, I'm going to say per the application dated November 2nd and the plans, uh, provided on December 13th, I got 13th, it. 13th, um, to approve a driveway to the left of the house lined with cobblestone apron, uh, including removing a tree and adjusting an existing fence um, and adding a two foot stone retaining wall uh, as shown in the uh, attached site plan uh, and to uh, include um, adding a barn light over the existing left block on the left side of the barn. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right. Dan, how do you vote? Aye. Justin? Aye. And it's an aye for me. The motion passes. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. So we'll work on all of this. Chris had to leave um, and we're good for the barn light and the driveway then, right? Yes. Perfect. And uh, At least a detail on the fence when you put that all together. Yes. Um, in terms of the fence, just one last question. It won't be exactly like what's there because we are trying to have some elephant, ele elephant element of privacy. Um, so what's there is not a privacy fence and it's only three feet tall, um, but this is set back and it would be a different profile, but still right. would. So I that. just so try to present what will, will is proposed. Okay. okay. All right. Perfect. So that was a partial approval. We'll continue this into January if you're ready. Care, um, Andrea, do they need an extension or will it be a new application? Um, I'll check on that. I think they're going to need an extension. Okay. So I'll I'll call you. Right. Meredith and Chris. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Um, next on seventy four North Street, Santa Cruz, <laughs> and Roger Hoyt is here. Thought I saw. There's Jessica. Yes, Roger Hoyt is here, and I think uh, Roger both is uh, here. Tim and Jessica Sandifer are, I think, also on. Yeah. Hello. All right. Um, I may need to share my screen uh, to show the plans. So if you'll give me a moment um, <clears throat> to do that. Since. Um, Okay.
Hold on, we're almost there. Roger, is there any backstory you want to tell us on this equity at all? Or Can we well, see this? No, you haven't, started, you haven't started sharing yet, Andrea. Yeah. I mean, we all have all the plans if you guys want to talk us, you want to okay. kind of just talk through them. Okay. Um, yeah, don't wait for me since I'm. <laughs> the uh, second project we've done for the Center for is we did an American Foursquare up North Street at 206 um, several years back where we put uh, addition on the back and the uh, uh, and the sides, but left the front pretty much intact. This is a very similar situation um, at uh, 174. Uh, we're using the existing foundation that the front, the brick ended section of the house basically is staying both inside and outside just as it is. Um, and then there was a, there was a shed roof, uh, two story and a shed roof, one story addition added directly behind the original building, the 1830s building. And we're also using the foundations, which are granite block, which are very nice, um, uh, to uh, uh, take the one story and the two story addition, which was not very well constructed, um, uh, and put it back in the same footprint. The gravel driveway that goes to the left of the east side of the, of the house and um, the back uh, garage and barn basically uh, are staying uh, as, as they are. Uh, there's a brick patio that's existing behind uh, the uh, two-story uh, addition and that will also remain. So the, the gravel driveway, the brick patio uh, will again stay uh, in, the, in that location. Uh, and I think that there, uh, you have uh, that, that's all basically shown on uh, drawing C2. Uh, and the, the areas where we're actually taking the, uh, the roof uh, off that addition and actually doing work on the back part of the front section of the house by changing the shed roof uh, again to a hip roof to match the, um, the existing front uh, of the uh, brick ended original house uh, will also show, uh, I think, pretty well in the uh, in the uh, elevations, and we put the the existing elevations uh, all four sides on the bottom of those uh, further sh on sheets, and uh, with the proposed work on the uh, on the top of each of those elevation sheets. So. Uh, do you have any questions about the the site plan C two if if you've seen them on uh, on your uh, packets, or do you want me to go through the entire presentation and then uh, you can go back to? Them? Yeah, why don't uh, you go through it? Okay, so I think then the the, the next sheet uh, uh, is uh, A eight, which shows the uh, the plan, um, and you can see the the uh, parlor and the dining area and the front staircase, which is magnificent uh, and the front entrance uh, and the, the entrance walkway, that, that all remains just as it now exists. And then the, uh, what's called for in that plan of bedroom one is where the sunroom is right at the moment. And the mudroom and, and rear entrance off of the driveway in the back of the garage and family room and a kitchen, uh, again, in the same footprint, but uh, uh, with the, the existing interior walls uh, taken out, new roof and new configuration on that, uh, on that first floor. But uh, very nice detail in that house with the, with the angled and shuttered uh, inside. So those, those walls on the uh, original part of the house are about 15 inches deep, thick. Uh, they had that wonderful sort of recessed shutter. I think I, I included a picture of those shutters and the, the rooms on 
I think it's sheet uh, P3, where you can actually see the uh, the indented shutter and the, and the windows. Uh, those windows are all six over six, uh, and uh, all the windows in that front section are going to be restored um, and and left uh, just as they are. And they do have uh, storm uh, aluminum storm and screen on the on the face. Uh, and again, we we. We'll be doing work on the the windows, but leaving it uh, pretty much that entire section uh, as uh, as it now exists. Uh, and then on sheet A nine, uh, again those the uh, premier bedroom, uh, which is the number six and number four above it, and the stairway uh, again. Uh, uh, being re retained as they are, that beautiful detail on the inside of the uh, uh, of the house, um, and all the the uh, casings, etc., um, will be uh, uh, kept in uh, kept in order. You notice on the uh, in that uh, bedroom number six, uh, there's a closet to the right of the what is the chimney, and if you when you look at the elevations, you'll see that the shutters. Uh, are, are sort of closed permanently, um, and uh, uh, I think it's a it's a look that we've also um, uh, presented on the uh, on the rear elevation of the house uh, with the shutter um, uh, closed, and that's it happens to be in the brick ended. But then there are uh, three bedrooms, and the primary bedroom is now on the rear of the house, facing the the barn and the, the back of the site. But again, all on the existing footprint of the uh, of the building. Uh, on sheet A10 uh, shows that the existing hip roof uh, on the front of the building, and then how we plan to to uh, present the hip roof on the rear addition, and how they all connect, and then the uh, lower roof, uh, which is where the porch and the entrance uh, off the patio coming into the mudroom. Uh, you can see that on, on uh, sheet A10 as to how that, that roof would all be con uh, configured. And the two, obviously two chimneys showing as they are right now existing on the front. And then on sheet A12, I'm sorry, should be sheet 11, A11. The front, the front elevation uh, shutters, uh, uh, clabbered uh, uh, windows, front door, door entrance, uh, the granite uh, foundation uh, would all be precisely the way it is uh, uh, as it is, exists. What you see on the right side uh, <laughs> was a wood stove pipe that was put in, we think, in the 60s. Um, and I'm I would I would say probably not approved. <laughs> it just it just put in. Um, but the uh, and you can see the profile of the rear section of the existing building, which is really a one story section at that that part. And our proposal is to uh, is to increase that to a two story to be able to uh, uh, to house the the primary bedroom uh, and on the back of the house. On the, <clears throat> on the east side, uh, which would be A12. Uh, again, at the bottom, you see what the, the house looks like now, the, the brick end. Um, on the uh, left side, uh, existing uh, shed roof off of the uh, main hip that was the original part of the house. Uh, and then the one story uh, addition on the right uh, and the, the uh, stovepipe going up through the uh, out out of the main part of the house and up uh, on the outside, uh, past the eave of the roof and up uh, up above the uh, the roof line, and then the upper part would be our proposed uh, addition where we return the front section, uh, all, all sections to a hip uh, uh, look to it. Uh, again, chimney and everything will stay the same. The front entrance portico would stay the same. 
And then um, one possibility was to use the, the window and shutter um, type that's on the, uh, on the main uh, brick ended section uh, in the rear uh, to uh, have one as a closet, one as a, a bathroom up there to have a, a shutter and then a small window above it um, uh, in that section that that uh, mirrors the the kind of shutter closed look that there is on the on the front side of the uh, uh, the uh, east side of the building. And then on A13, that would be looking from the barn or the back. Um, of the building again with the with the roof lines, um, you can you can see the existing on the bottom. Um, there's a uh, uh, a plain glass sunroom uh, with a well I don't know what the word actually the adjective is but maybe funky um, uh, clear story lighting uh, uh, above it that was uh, uh, sort of. Uh, um, uh, parsed together um, with different kind of uh, uh, windows uh, on the, the back side, and our um, proposal is to is to use a similar type of uh, both scale and type of window uh, in the family room as well as the primary bedroom above it on the rear elevation, leaving the that's an access door that goes into the uh, the block. A granite block foundation um, to the sort of super crawl space that's underneath that that area that will again all be retained as well as the the framing for that uh, is in reasonably good shape uh, so that we'll really be taking the, the, the what is now the roof of that rear section off uh, and changing the roof over the projected section that you'll see on the on the uh, uh, East elevation uh, on this uh, on the next sheet uh, with the, the double doors going into the, the mud room again facing directly uh, back of the of the house. Uh, there's about fifteen or sixteen feet from the edge of the house to the property line on that east side, and the driveway is right uh, right up against the fence and a. Uh, a hedge line uh, that's that's there, and again, that's all going to remain uh, as it, it as it now exists. Uh, and pretty easy to see there, but you can't really see the back of this from that east side. You can't see the back of this addition, proposed addition. And then um, on sheet A fourteen, um, on the lower part, you see the. The, the two windows on the brick ended section where the, where the shutters closed, where they put closets uh, in that uh, bedroom. Our, our uh, proposal is to open one of those um, uh, in our second, our second floor plan, but every, the openings stay exactly as they are uh, right now. And then uh, you see that the existing two story space has a a change in the roof line from a shed roof to a, to a hip roof. And there's a hip uh, roof over the, the first floor that wraps around the rear where the entrance comes in from the back driveway and the uh, patio. And then um, on the left side of the top of that elevation, you'll see the, the doors that uh, going into the family room uh, from that brick patio. And with the uh, uh, the windows up in the primary bedroom uh, above it, and there is a walkout uh, balcony uh, proposed uh, on the end, uh, facing the rear of the of the site uh, towards the barn, um, at the, for the for the primary bedroom. Uh, <clears throat> so then on on P one, um, Roger, can I ask a question about A fourteen just while sure. we are on it? Yep. On the left side proposed, which is the upper half of A14, can you describe the central, is that a, a little porch area in between yes. columns? Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to, to sort of maintain the, the, the profile that was that was there, that the second floor is set back about six feet. So that we're trying to keep the 
the brick ended piece of the original house uh, uh, it, it clear of all the rest of the roof lines. Right now, if you look down the driveway on one of those pictures, you can just, it, there's a lot of uh, foliage that's in, in front of it at this point. And, and uh, again, because we're working with the existing foundation, um, there's, there's no reason to remove a lot of that. I think they would like to, to trim it. Uh, you know, it hasn't been cared for in, in, quite a, in quite a while, but all the driveway and the patios and the walkways in the, in the back are scheduled to be uh, retained as they are. Uh, so that there's no there's no big difference in the in the site arrangement. Uh, both east and west sides will stay pretty much as as they now exist. Uh, uh, but that's that's why that roof is set back so that the that second floor of the uh, proposed uh, uh, re renovated plan on on the second floor uh, ha is stayed uh, as far back as we can from the existing brick ended original house. Does that answer uh, for yes, you? Yes, thank you. Okay. And, and actually, if you could elaborate just a little bit on the dashed uh, outline, which I'm, apparently is the, is the window behind. There's a dashed box on A14. Yes, that's, that, that's correct. That's, that's the um, a window that's in the uh, underside of the entrance yep. uh, to the to the mudroom. So that's so our X-ray vision going right. through. Right, right. Okay. I think that that will show on the on the first floor plan. Um, let me go back to that. Yes, that shows on A eight. Um, so you have you have a little porch and entrance towards that mudroom and there's a window that goes into that you know, bring the light into that section yep, of the kitchen. Got it. And, and See exactly what that is now. Yep. Thank you. And then, okay, so we're um, ready to, are we yeah, ready to go? On, is there, on any, work, oh, is there any work on the garage? It looks like you're trying to add three feet to the front of yeah, the Yeah, right now that, that garage is 19 foot deep. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> And doesn't do much for uh, trying to get a car uh, yep. out of the out of the snow. So we're proposing to add um, three feet to the uh, to that garage depth, the width, and everything. And the, again, the perimeter stays the same, and the elevation stays the same. It's just that we're going to we'll put a three foot uh, deep by uh, uh, twenty two foot wide uh, face on the garage. So you can actually bring a car in. Right now, cars are sitting outside, and they don't have a flat roof. Or how? You, what are you doing with the roof? No, that would be a pitched roof uh, off the. Uh, if, you, if you see the, so you're just going to extend the existing. Right. Pitch down. Okay. Correct. And then, how high is the is how high is the train when it's behind this property? Is it is it still deep? It's still coming out of the tunnel. It's out, it's coming out of the tunnel, right? It's still underground, actually. It doesn't come out until our neighbors. Um, I see a lot of people on the screen here. Are there any abutters or neighbors who would like to speak? All right, Luis, Mrs. Smith, you're on mute. I was just signaling that I have a neighbor. I don't care to speak, though. Thank you. OK. Uh, <clears throat> the Mellons? Um, I just wondered, um, it looks like in the back they have two garages. Which one is getting bigger? It looks like the one in the middle. The, the, the one furthest back, they, they, they've labeled a carriage house. That oh, one's not okay. getting bigger. The one in the middle um, is three feet um, towards, it looks like 170 North Street because okay. it's it's pretty close to the property line on 178 Street. Oh, okay. Because I know that that building sort of already has gone a little bit into the neighbors on the right. So I was hoping it was going the other way. Good. It is. It is. Thanks. <laughs> I think that shows on drawing C2. Yep. Um, yeah, but they don't have the drawings and 
I no, don't we don't see the drawings. Okay. So okay. there's a, nothing on that on that east. Sorry. Oh, west side um, is changing in terms of the back and the sides of that garage. It's only coming towards the driveway, uh, but there's there's probably. 28 feet or so between the front of the new projection on the garage uh, to the property line that would abut um, 170. Yeah. Love Thank it. You. Love it. Thanks. All right. Um, any other neighbors, brothers? I don't think so. Dan, did you have some questions? Uh, yeah, the garage was one of them. Um, the other questions, um, I don't, I didn't see it in the packet. Uh, there weren't any cut sheets for doors or windows. Uh, well, yes. I mean, this is a, uh, is a preliminary proposal, but that we're talking about using the, the Marvin ultimate, uh, on any of the new windows that, that, uh, uh, are facing either East or West. And then the South, the South windows, uh, would be the elevate, uh, Marvin elevate. Okay. I, I just asked that because there's a lot of thought that has gone into this. I can tell you guys put a lot of thought and detail uh, into these drawings. It's, um, you know, a lot of this makes sense. You're trying to really improve upon what was there. Uh, the massing uh, seems appropriate. I mean, you're staying within most of the original footprint. Um, the rear elevation is probably what should have been done originally. Um, <laughs> so, um, and then the left elevation, your east elevation. Um, I just throw this out there as an as an idea. Uh, I'm not married to it, but have, leaving the one shutter shut. Uh, I know it's a closet, but if you can right. get creative and maybe false, put a false wall behind it or something like that, so it opens up. I don't. I don't know. The symmetry just throws me when it's two over two and closed. So just some, something to think about. Um, you know, I think I think we're getting into the granular details because there's been a lot of thought and effort that going into this. So um, I find most of this to be appropriate. Uh, I drove by the house. I'm comfortable without a site visit, but I don't know how the rest of the community feels. All right. My answer to that question would be it's it's certainly possible. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, a little tweak on the on the plan would allow that to happen. Um, but I was sort of using that that piece of it uh, with the uh, the, the, the primary bedroom in the back uh, and trying to get some natural light. Um, and it, that seemed to be on a, a, a 12, a, a reasonable way to, uh, to get that uh, without, uh, you know, sort of undoing the, the look of the entire house. Um, and yeah, it, the, the, those windows on A12 make a lot of sense. I understand, you know, it's set back, it kind of that far back, the, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I was just thinking more on, a14, uh, right. the one window that's left. So something to think about, but um, I'm good otherwise. All right. I don't know if this is a historically correct dog on P3. <laughs> <laughs> well, the dog uh, stands about, uh, I mean, when we were meeting <laughs> with the Sandifers, the dog yeah. head was well above the table, the, the dining room <laughs> table. Uh, so it, uh, it's a rather large creature, but the, one of the kindest, nicest, sweetest dogs you'd ever want to meet. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, do Just you have any questions or comments? No, I. Uh, it, it, it looks like a quite appropriate application to me. Marianne? No, it looks fine to me. Eric? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a really well put together package, nice looking addition. <clears throat> Only clarification, I, I, I'm i assuming it's right on the site plan. You're not going over that setback. It looks like you're right tight to it, right? Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. And then um, I appreciate that you actually showed that the, the rubber roof will poke up slightly, but just uh, it's going to be two inches, I think, if you're going a quarter inch a foot or something. So really not going to be noticeable, but I appreciate that you showed it on there and didn't try to hide it. So that's, that's appreciated. Um, and I would just reiterate Dan's comments, the, you know, just clarification on exactly what's going to be put in for windows and, um, 
even for the foundation using all the existing foundations. So if there's no changes there, not needed. Um, but all in all, I think it's very appropriate. And to reiterate, I guess Dan's other comment about that one window sort of is I understand we can't take out plans, so I understand how you got there for sure. Um, but that's the one piece that'd be lovely if there was some modification. So thank you. All right. Uh, so I'm not hearing any the need for a site visit necessarily. So does anyone want to make a motion? Sure. Um, I guess just before I do that, um, just to clarify, is everybody comfortable? I'm comfortable with it. I think that I can just incorporate it into the motion that um, north, or I'm sorry, east and west elevations will be um, true or uh, simulated divided wood window, Marvin wind, wood windows, and then the back, um, you know, it's outside of our jurisdiction anyway. So uh, if yeah. both Roger and the owners are good with that and the committee is, then I think we can improve this tonight. Okay. Yeah, and, oh, and, and, the way, and then also wood, and then also wood doors. I would assume yeah. is the plan. Yeah, wood doors and and the the, the existing clabberts are are uh, <laughs> between four and three quarter and four and seven eighths, and would be matching exactly yeah. what the existing clabber so, is. So I'll just make a note that Andrea, you'll just supply that to Andrea uh, yeah. in the motion. Then, all right. So I'll uh, issue or propose a motion to issue a certificate of appropriateness for 174 North Street in the Lincoln Historic District, uh, per the plan stated. Uh, November 10th, 2022, uh, work to include uh, November uh, 16th. Is that 16th? Mine's the 10th. Oh, no, I, uh, yes, it says 10 on the plans. So, okay, sorry. Um, for the plans dated November 10th, 2022, work to include in addition to utilizes the existing granite stone and brick foundation walls located in the second located on the second floor behind the brick ended 1830 original federal style structure the exist um, work to include a two-story addition wing uh, to the rear of the house um, uh, replacement of uh, new materials will match the existing okay. clapboards and the uh, include asphalt shingles clapboards um, shutters and wood doors uh, wood doors and wood windows, windows to be uh, simulated divided lights on the east and west elevations and the applicant to provide cut sheets of doors and windows to Andrea Young for review. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second that. All right, Justin. <laughs> Eric, how do you vote? Aye. Justin? Aye. Marianne? Aye. Dan? Hi. We, we thank you very much uh, for that uh, vote and uh, look forward to uh, uh, talking with Andrea with uh, more finite detail. Roger, I'm curious, how long ago did you guys start this, the plans and how much time did you put into these? Um, I think it's, uh, we, <laughs> we worked on them uh, uh, and then stopped uh, when COVID hit. <laughs> and, oh, and, okay. And then came back. Uh, uh, well, I can't say it's over, but uh, at least uh, uh, at this this just juncture. So it's been a while in the cooking, but I think uh, we're all very excited about uh, uh, the enough. promise. Well, thanks for okay. putting together a great application. I appreciate it. We uh, we appreciate your vote tonight. That's very helpful to us. Right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Roger. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you, Sandifers. Thank you, Andrea. Good to see everybody. Good night. Good night. All right. Um, next on the list, um, new application 219 Main Street. Uh, I don't see Sean here. So all the families are on. Um, so I'll do a quick introduction on this. Um, We've seen this project several times before. What's back for us tonight is a modification to the um, constructed um, wall in front of the house. Um, the memories are proposing to remove the wall that's constructed in the front, except for looks like six or eight feet on the 
kind of east side. And I think by keeping that um, six feet coming off the corner of the house, that's what allow that is what is allowing um, Sean to um, get the slope. We were having trouble when we were discussing this before. We were having trouble not having the wall at all um, because of the way the slopes are on the site and where the um, first floor elevation is. And I think keeping this six or eight foot portion is allowing them to um, remove the wall in the front of the house, which I think is a, a pretty big gesture. Um, so then we would just be, the, the lawn would just be sloping up to that um, existing stone landing and, and steps to the front door. <clears throat> um, looks like, is, is Sean on here yet? I don't want to miss He's not. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, go ahead. This is Jim Memory. Um, he, he's been unable to join us tonight. Yep, that's fine. Um, do you, you want to say anything or? Um... Yes, please. Go ahead. I, I would thank you for the opportunity to address the board. And I, I'm appearing tonight without legal or other professional representation. We regret so much uh, that bad feeling has been engendered toward us due to inaccurate information and assumptions that, about us, quote, taking liberties during construction. My wife, Mary Catherine, had a recent conversation with Andrea Young, and after reviewing the facts, Andrea agreed that errors were made. I believe that correcting the record tonight will lead to a reconciliation between us and the commission. We've been Hingham residents for 30 years and very proud of the work that we've performed on our prior three homes. All three, 15 Camelot Drive, 93 Main Street, and 197 Main Street, have been featured in the Patriot Ledger on various occasions while we lived in them. And both 93 and 197 were renovated um, with, with the blessing of, of the Historic Districts Commission. The comments I present tonight are, are verifiable and all on video record. Um, let me begin by the, the first is that the board was told that this is not the house that they approved, and they thought it would be a small one bedroom house. The facts are clear that the exterior is exactly the house that Jim Magner, the developer, had gotten approved. We purchased the land with pre-approved plans from him and followed them exactly. We asked to build an overhang over the side door and were denied because it, de it was deemed inappropriate. In reality, many historical homes in the district have such overhangs. We asked then for a covered walkway between the house and garage, and we were denied for appropriateness again. Many homes have such walkways or, or are fully connected to their garage. We were several have such structures. We asked for the doors. We're told the doors are historically correct for Cape Cod homes. A stroll through our historic district will clearly show that a very large percentage of these homes have dormers. We were told that our driveway was too large and enough to park 12 cars. After measurement, it was shown to be able to accommodate three cars. But to please the board, we reduced the size without objection. The board was told that the house was taller than what was pre-approved and it was closer to the street than what was approved. Review of the plans will show that this is simply not true. The height and location are exactly according to plan. Review of commission meetings will show that the board gave significant leeway to other new construction in the, in the district simply because they are new. And yet this house was held to strict historic requirements even though we too are new construction. The board was given the impression that we received an ignored notice to stop work on the wall in question when it was discovered that full stones were not being used by the builder. The record will show that we did not receive this letter as it was sent certified to an address where we could not receive certified mail. We were also accused of altering the topography of the land which caused a self-imposed need to build the wall. Again, not true. And in fact, the wall was constructed precisely to assist with maintaining the natural topography. The board stated, Quote, it would never approve the construction of a wall with a veneer. We had no way of knowing that, especially since the veneer consisted of totally natural materials and certainly did not appear to addition, photos will show 392 Main Street and 93 Main Street, ironically our old house, have recently constructed similar walls. Although both of those walls are veneers with sliced stone and our veneers constructed of totally natural half stones. A combination of unfortunate problems, many caused due to problems associated with COVID, have now dragged the construction of this home out for three years. In spite of the fact that some board members have told us that our house is ugly and that we created a Disneyland atmosphere, we've been told by many people in town that the house is a nice addition to the neighborhood. 
If the board would please reconsider approval of this wall, Mr. Papich has assured me that we could provide enough landscaping to cover much of it. The wall is the only issue remaining preventing us from moving into our home before Christmas. With the facts that I presented, I would ask the board's compassion and understanding and to give us approval to retain the wall with the addition of landscaping in front of it. So that's different than the plan that we have in front of us. So what you're asking now is to keep the wall. Yes, it is. Okay. I think after reviewing the facts, you would see that you know, there, there's uh, uh, absolutely good reason for that wall to stay in place. Um, Mr. Chairman, we do not have an application for the wall to stay in place. We can't, um, we can't act on an application that we don't have. Why the, uh, the existing application is still on file. The no, the existing application um, is one that was submitted by Sean Pappage um, in order to be included in this hearing. And it showed uh, removal of the wall. Um, and that's the most recent thing we have. So. Um, Andrea, can you explain to me why we're being held to different standards than everyone else? I don't know that that's the case. Well, I just showed you 392 Main Street and 93 Main Street. We were unfairly denied to begin with. That is the issue. Not that whether this is current or not current. We were unfairly denied. And, and we and genuinely, we genuinely uh, don't want, I mean, we love this town. We've obviously been here for 30 years, raised our children here. And some of our children still live here in their in their own houses. Andrew, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, we have an application in front of us that says one thing. We can act on that tonight. And then uh, Mr. Mamory's recourse for our previous committee's vote is not through this committee, but through other means. That's right. We do have, uh, there is the lawsuit that is in place, Mr. Mamory. Um, tonight, if you're asking us to react to this particular application, we'd be happy to do that. That's what's in front of us tonight. We don't have anything else. So, and it's uh, beyond our scope to talk about um, any legal action that is left to our attorneys. We certainly do not want to sue the town that we love, but we have been unfairly boxed into a corner. And we have been unfairly boxed into a corner because the board took a position that was based on false information. Sorry, Mr. Mamory. Um, the only thing we can talk about really is that what is before us tonight. I'm so sorry. So the application is that we have removal, previously constructed front stone wall and steps, replacement with granite steps and lawn slope. So. so Mr. Chair, uh, uh, I, without Mr. Pappage here, I'm gonna withdraw the application. Okay. Okay. Is there an opportunity for anyone else to speak? Sure, go ahead. I'm, this is Erica Good and Chris Good. We live at 10 Hilltop Road in town. And we're speaking out in concern for the treatment you have um, you have given to these homeowners in town. I, both of us, Chris and I, have both been party to many Zoom hearings at this point that the Mammaries have had to go through, and it's very upsetting to watch this unfold and hear personal attacks of a nature, I'll just throw out one example, was that the house is ugly. These aren't the kinds of things that any committee is supposed to be speaking on. You have a certain directive in your role as a committee member, and that those are the things that you should be addressing. This 
these plans that were approved and and have not allowed them to move into the house for going, what is it, three years now. It's just unacceptable behavior in a town that we have also lived here over 30 years, as have the memories. And I've never seen anything like this in the past. And I think it's time to take a look at the way this is unfolded and make and and have this resolved. We wanted to make our voices heard because it's really unacceptable. Okay, we can only act on what's in front of us tonight, which Mr. Mamory is withdrawing. So what was in front of you before, Mr. Chairman, was that the, the, to build that wall. We built that wall and you uh, um, have that in front of you. That wall uh, was, was denied. Okay, Th I'm asking you to reverse that denial. I'm not asking for any new agenda items here. That denial was unfairly administered. I know, but that that application is closed. We can't act. Do you, on do, that. you do you think that this is worth the town's money to be involved in a lawsuit over this when it's clear that the the evidence presented to the judge will show that two other houses have the same wall? You're going to lose the lawsuit. We don't want to sue you. If there's an application to reconsider the wall, we could act on that. But that's not what's in front of us right now. The application in front of us is to remove the wall. And I oh, and it doesn't so sound like you want to go down that path anymore. Well, I, I would. If you're okay would removing the wall. House. We can act on this application tonight. But I, we can't act on anything that's not in front of us or not open anymore. What closed the last one? The denial? Denial. I was hoping to get into the house before Christmas. Obviously, that won't happen. I mean, I think our committee could act on this tonight if um, if you want to leave this application that's in place as an option tonight, and we can act on that and move forward. But I think if that gets approved, then they're tied to removing the wall, and I'm not sure that's what he wants. To Correct. Do. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. I and. Can I, can I offer some feedback um, just on this application? Um, I think that the big, I, would, I'm gonna, I think one of the nice things about this plan is the granite steps. Um, you know, when I think when we were reviewing the wall, uh, if I remember correctly, one of the uh, things that really looked different um than what was presented on the original plan was the risers of the steps and it looks like you're going back with granite steps instead with risers um no, that's what's know. in place now okay i couldn't tell from this plan if it was a full depth or nothing, if that little stone was nothing has changed it. Other, other than the fact that we're, we would be forced okay. to they're down to sixty thousand okay. dollars yeah um what I was what I was going to say there is I thought that the plans was dictating like they're going to be full thick pavers um full seven inch because it said seven inch risers i thought that's what those treads were um i think that's what the plan calls for we'd have to have sean clarify that but um where i was going with that is i feel like that could be a middle ground is you know visually i think some of the other committee members were really stuck on the way that those stones looked under the thin pavers if you're going back with thick seven inch risers uh and eliminating those stones um there might be a path forward where the wall could stay um the risers change the treads change and that's a new application and something we can review new risers wall stays um, i'm just speaking from my perspective um as a committee member um one of one of five but uh, that would that's... certainly certainly be a, a, a reasonable compromise um but again doesn't help me tonight and um and this is the only issue keeping so me guess... in my house that i've spent so I guess that's my question. I guess that's my question for the chair should, and, and Andrea. Yeah, we maybe is, wait. We should maybe wait and see what they want to. What the next? Yeah. Step. Well, I was just going to ask: is if we 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 all the time review plans, um, and then in our motion makes minor modifications. I didn't know if we could approve new risers and leave the existing wall. If that's think, an option with this application. Anything. No. Okay. Were there any other butters? I see Mr. Healy's on. Anyone wanted to say anything before we move on? 
Uh, if, if I could just address the board briefly, as well as my neighbor. Um, this is a sad, sad state of affairs. I, I, I thought that there was going to be a modification with respect to the wall. I can certainly appreciate the cost that the Mamory family has incurred. Um, and I can certainly appreciate the frustration. Um, I came prepared to speak favorably to what I thought was going to happen. But I, in light of the fact that Mr. Mamory's withdrawn the, the plan or whatever, um, it, you know, as somebody who's done permitting for 25, 30 years in the town of Hingham, it, it can be very, very difficult. Um, I can remember the goods, in fact, on Baker Hill, uh, vividly, in fact. Um, and, you know, permitting and telling people what to do with their property is, is not something that's easily done, um, especially when aesthetics are, are involved here. I, I just hope something can be worked out on this. I, I don't know where, where Ms. Ma yeah, I see you there, Mr. Mamory. I, you know, I, the house is coming along really nice. The, the places that you own there are looking good. Um, I just feel bad that we're in this kind of place now. If, I'm not, I don't know what else I can add. I just hope that this can be resolved. I was hoping that it would have been tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Mamory, I think we should leave this tonight as a continuation before you officially withdraw. Maybe you want to talk to Sean or your council. Um, and then that would, you know. It's withdrawing. We'll, we'll, we'll probably end up in court. Okay. Um, we'll need. By the way, by the way, um, Andrea, you misinformed your, um, your your commission members that um, they were named personally. They are named as in, in their in their positions and in, in their office. So there's no personal liability. Just no. That. We understand that. Can Mr. Mamory, um, should I send? Uh, I need to have you sign a withdrawal form. Should I send that to you, or should I send that to your attorney? Uh, do whatever you please. Well, I just. <laughs> Is Mr. Danahy still representing you? Should I send it to him? Just give me some direction, please. If you want me to send it to you, I'll need, um, I just need someone's signature on this. So if you want me to send it to you, Mr. I'll Mr. Danahy. It. What? No, Mr. Danahy is our, is our representative. Okay, I'll send it to him. Thank you. Okay, we'll move to the next item. 270 North Street. Good evening. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Andrea. Um, I'm not sure we're able to share plans tonight. No, I'm sorry. I, yeah, this is not working tonight. I'm sorry, but you have everything. Yep. Are you trying to stop animals from getting into your shrubs? <laughs> no. um, so we have the application in front of us if you want to just kind of do a quick description. Sure. So um, I'm looking to put a two foot fence in the front of um, my house in the first kind of like if you picture my the front of my house, it's like a big giant mulch um, bed. And then it has the brick walkway going through the middle ish. And then the fence I'm proposing is um, at the front of the one that's closest to the house. So it's not like right on the street or anything. It's like tucked in. Um, behind my brick walkway and then on the side of my house um, just two fence panels with an arbor um, on the side just to kind of for some 
privacy and some curb appeal. And you're going to leave the cedar raw, I assume. Um, I'm uh, white. Or painting. You're going yeah. to paint it white. Okay. Right. And um, that's the cobblestones. You don't actually have a driveway, right? It's just cobblestone it is, and then yes. grass. Yeah. So it's a it's a cobblestone driveway and then the grass and then I have like a little brick patio. Okay. Yeah. It's it's all very small. The the photo with like a six foot fence is that's your back that's your back patio. So that's the end of the cobblestone with the back patio. So that's where the arbor would come. Yes, it where the uh, like a little bit beyond the cobblestone. So it would run from the fence um, from the house to my tall hedges that I have there. But Kimberly is not using. Oh, hi, Kitty. Kimberly I know. Is <laughs> he waited till I was talking, and then I was like, "Oh, <laughs> what's she doing?" Kimberly is not using a six-foot fence, although that's what the picture shows. Yeah, yeah, that's and a also fence back at the tracks there. Yeah, so it's going to be, I believe, a four-foot fence. Kimberly, it's actually going to it's actually going to be three feet, just three to kind of keep with the scale of my house. Like it, it appears to be very small from outside. I just don't want it to be overpowering. So I'm bringing down um, a traditional arbor a foot as well. Um, so the yes. picture that I I took a picture of at Avo Fence, um, that's a that picture is a four-foot fence and then an eight-foot arbor, I believe. And, and the arbor gonna is going to be scaled appropriately. Yes. Will the three foot fence match the two foot fence? Absolutely. And is this similar to what's across the street or? Um, no, it's like it's not similar. That's kind of, yeah, that's a little bit um, different. Okay. What's I'm shown is, a, is in fact the fence that you will. Yeah, that's the exact fence that I'm getting. That's the exact okay. fence, but it's much lower. Yep. But in the sense of the vertical yes. slats. The style is chestnut the hill. The style. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Anyone want to make a motion? Make a motion to is issue a certificate of appropriateness for 270 North Street in the Lincoln Historic District to install a two foot high cedar fence to to be painted white across the front elevation of the house on North Street from the corner of the house on the west side to the front door <laughs> uh, and a three foot high cedar fence from the uh, at the end of the cobblestone driveway to the existing hedges to include a uh, scaled arbor off the three foot fence, both fences to be painted white. Is there a second? Second. All right, Marianne, how do you vote? Aye. Eric? Aye. Justin? Aye. Dan? Aye. That's an aye for me. Motion passes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. If they were all that easy. Thanks, Kimberly. That's great. I'm glad. Quick, quick. Glad you start. guys had me sweating. <laughs> I know. <laughs> My first time. <laughs> oh, it, you did very well, and it's a nice application. So thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. So right. um, we have minutes. Just to confirm, you sent us just September and October, right? Or did I miss that November? That is correct. No, okay. that is correct. And, uh, I reviewed the minutes and don't have any corrections. Make a motion then, Justin. Um, oh, I, if uh, <laughs> unless there is other discussion, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for uh, September 15th. And I'll, I'll bundle it the two sets of minutes and October 20. Is there a second? Second. All right, Dan, how do you vote? Aye. Justin? Aye. And aye for me. We'll save Eric and Marianne. <laughs> so, um, minutes 
or approve. I had a quick question for Andrea and Marianne. The lecture, was that ever posted eventually? Is that on PBS or, or, or sorry, not PBS, uh, Community TV or anything? It's in the works. Okay. Um, I want to send it to my in-laws. I think they'd love it. Well, there's two portions to it. One <laughs> is that Haber Media, well, one is that John Meacham had a change of agents between when I contracted for it and now. So there's a little bit of um, yeah. um, red tape. But so there's one that's been approved to have a showing on Haber Media in for Hingham residents or whatever the jurisdiction is for um, Haber Media. I also signed an agreement saying that we want a password protected um, showing and those are the details that need to be worked out. Um, and so Andrea and I are working on it, <coughs> um, probably more vociferously this, this past couple of weeks than we had been after September. But hopefully we will, um, it, you know, it, it's high on my list. All right. It's the final coup, <laughs> that whole thing. That's awesome. Well, I look forward to seeing it again. Yeah. Yeah. Andrea, is uh, is there an opportunity that uh, I can help you out? To do uh, what? Can you make me an? Can the town make me an? I always need help. What? Can you make me an? Can you make me an admin for the Zoom meetings, and I can help you out with? Oh, and I can of course get you the can. You know what happened tonight, and I apologize. I don't know uh, when I signed in. It ended up that I was a, a participant, oh, so I had okay. no control, and that was and other than backing out and restarting and yeah. having everybody sign in again. But yeah, I would love that until um, you. I was yeah. just thinking if yeah, I was just thinking that you used to have a, a backup. So if one of us can help you out, and I'm happy to do it, be a backup for you. Oh, hooray for that! I'm excited for that. Thank you so much. I would really appreciate it since I'm not a techno wizard and we can all attest to that. <laughs> I try, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> we all have our strengths and we play to them. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Anything else from anyone? I just want to wish a motion everyone to adjourn. No, no, no. Before that, oh, no. we have to wish <laughs> everyone. Um, a wonderful holiday, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever. Um, it's because uh, we won't see each other until the first after the first of the year. So well, I'll second that. Good. <laughs> hey, Andrea. Actually, one other thing I have: um, if you could save a copy of the one seventy four North Street and make copies and that when people come in and they ask what they should put together, give that to them as an example would be great. Right, what is the most beautiful application? Isn't, wasn't that nice? Roger did a great job. Yeah, really okay, wonderful. Thanks. I will, I will do that. Hooray, Roger, yes. Motion to adjourn then? Yeah. Second. All right. And we have yep. to roll call. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I sat through that uh, open meeting law seminar <laughs> yeah so justin aye dan no <laughs> and it's not for me you want to hang around dan <laughs> no the yeah, eyes just put, just making tracy's vote actually matter for once <laughs> i'll sit in for him right now if you want me to tracy <laughs> <laughs> thanks everybody All right.